the only people that God will accept are people that accept the solution to the fall of man. And the solution to the fall of man, according to the provisions of divine justice, it requires that the day you eat of this food, you will die. Okay? So, the solution to the challenge of humanity is tied to an ultimate sacrifice that a sinless entity will come and do upon the face of the earth. And that's what Jesus came to satisfy. However, God was already seen through that sacrifice, even before the sacrifice took place. Now, the only basis upon which he will choose, he will accept anybody, was going to be through Jesus Christ. If you read the book of Colossians, you are going to find so many things that Jesus did for us. You see, in him, we have redemption, even the forgiveness of sins. Huh? He is the head of the body. He is, he is, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. And what Colossians is trying to do is to present Christ as preeminent, as the governor, as the administrator. And anything he is not administering is not in the kingdom of God. So the Bible says that in him, he chose us in him. That means he opened the door in Christ Jesus and only such chosen will be able to design Jesus as the only access point into the kingdom of God. So it was through Jesus and by Jesus that we were all chosen. And what he did was that he put us in him. So when he was dealing with Jesus on the cross, it was not just Jesus he was dealing with. He was dealing with you. And the proof, because we are still using the lens of eternity. We have not entered time. I will show you how it works in time. But when he was dealing with Jesus, he was dealing with Jesus not just as a human being, but as a corporate being that contains you too. Oh my See, when God was dealing with Abraham, because the Bible says that God saw that Abraham was going to be great. Abraham was going to be the father of such that believe. God had to come to Abraham and preach the gospel to him. Oh, okay, you are not with me. So we need to add that scripture. Because the Bible says, for this purpose, the gospel was preached to Abraham. It was not because of Abraham. It was because of what Abraham was going to be representing. He was dealing with Abraham as a corporate man. Because everyone that was going to believe was going to become a child of Abraham. So he was dealing with you through his dealings with Abraham. So Abraham received dealings that were oversized. Dealings that he did not need for his personal life. Dealings that were corporate dealings because he was going to be a father of a people that believe. That's the kind of dealing we're talking about that Jesus had. He dealt with Jesus. He dealt with you through his dealing with Jesus. So the moment you are brought into that ecosystem, into him, the syllabus of what God will do to you, he has already done to Jesus. So he begins to implement that thing now by the Spirit. We are still seeing from eternity. We will still come, we'll soon come into time. Oh, you are not with me. You have a calling. You think the dealings that God, God is dealing with you now is just is is a believer's dealing. No, it's no longer on that context. They dealing because of who you have become in God's plan. And there are many people that are attached to you. Because the pathway of gaining mastery in spiritual things in the kingdom of God is that you need to follow a man that is following Christ. The dealings that God brings upon people that others will follow is corporate. It's not just individual. Because he will deal with you through him. He will deal with Abika through my own life. 
There are things I have tracked. There are dealings that have worked in me to produce some results. He is looking at me. He wants those results. He will begin to inherit the dealings first. And then the results will begin to come. Just like when we begin to follow Jesus. We begin to inherit the dealings. It is our destiny to also partake of those dealings. And partake of sufferings. It is part of our destiny. Because those sufferings were forged into Jesus. And that's how he altered our salvation. And you that were a product of that salvation. Your own life will not be different from how it was altered. Yes. When you align with Jesus. Then those dealings will become your first consignment of inheritance. Just like when you find a true spiritual father. And you align with him. The first things that will come to you is the portion of your suffering. You will inherit dealings. It is part of the system. It is when you start inheriting the same dealings that he is inheriting. That is the proof that you are his son. Because in a few years from that time, you will begin to walk in his anointing, his glory. Because you have been a partaker of his dealings, you will walk in his glory and you even have the possibility of walking it in that glory in higher levels of excellence. There is nothing that is happening to you now that didn't happen to Jesus. But when you became connected to Jesus, you now inherited those dealings. The same spirit began to replicate those dealings around your life because the results God wants to produce in your life, he produced them in Jesus. Exactly. So he chose you in him. He dealt with him as if he was dealing with you. So that when you come, you will inherit dealings that are already existing. When I started following my father in the Lord, in my own opinion, he's one of the wisest pastors in this country. First of all, look at his marital life. Then you will know that a wise man. I'm talking about a man that makes minimal mistakes. Minimal, very minimal. In speech, in word, in action, he operates in an economy of precision. And I've, I'm a very, oh, I'm a dangerous student. Terrible student. I can see your mistakes easily. But I walked with a man that was impeccable. And I wanted to find out how did God achieve this? How many of you know there's one Islamic leader in the north um, who is in jail now? Well, if you call the name, you, are, you call the name. But there's one, there's one man so this man came to visit my father in the Lord and said, This is your church is fine, no? Uh, we want to expand our affairs in this location. And we're thinking if we could buy it. So my father in the Lord asked him, You want to buy this place? Yes. I start the bidding with 300 million. It's okay, we'll talk about it. Then he went and talked to God. I said, God, see this man. No? It was one week later that he was in prison. <laughs> yeah, that's the man I'm, te I'm telling you about. <laughs> Is that man? And I don't want to overemphasize it until we have the privilege to bring him. I will ask him to do something for you. Let him pray for you. You think you will know that prayer is powerful when that man prays for you? Because it will come to a pass. I have followed him for years. Don't tell him what you want. In that prayer, he will say it. Oh, okay. He wants to build. Give him money. When you finish that prayer session, go and write what he prayed about. It will come to pass. That's the one I'm talking about. Yes, yes. You will never, he is impeccable. 
when they say man of God, that's me, I'm not man of God yet. That, that is the type they call man of God. So when I started following him, I started following him, he looked at me and he said, You are ripe for ordination. But I was not married then. I waited, even though I was qualified, to get married. It was seven days after my marriage that I went forward. And while he was ordaining us, we were to be ordained reverend. He, he was the one that pointed and said, this one is an apostle. So that's how they ordained me apostle. Not, we were going to be ordained reverend. So he was the one that said, this one is an apostle. So that's how I became I knew that was my calling, but how can you speak before such a man? And it was the Holy Ghost that spoke to him. So there are people you are seeing apostle on, eh? We don't know them. Oh. <laughs> we don't know them. We don't. Don't be quick to even. Eh? Hmm. Well, and the Lord will help us. Don't. There are people carrying title. Are you following? Around. Let me tell you something. They don't, the grace of an apostle, he uh, will bring you into death first. They don't know death and they are calling apostle. The Bible, the Paul says, it seems as though God calls us apostles first. As men that are being delivered unto death. There is no way you will walk in this calling and not have the kind of persecution that will cut off your pride. You can't mix persecution and pride. Eh? The things that will make for, for you to die to self, God will sponsor it in your direction. And when you are, you have nothing to live for again and you are just lying down, he will leave you there in that state. When you will not say, let me die, you will not say, okay, now, I will send you. By the time he's sending you, you don't have any other agenda other than to go and deliver this message. So we see people with flesh and self. They are only our apostles. <laughs> well, the Lord will help us. So it was not my suggestion. It was my father that saw it. He said, this guy has this calling. And they ordained me as Hallelujah. Every other time I go there to give a report, this is how far we have gone. This is the shape of the finances. He's the one that told me, don't talk about finances when you come here again. See today. I followed him. Then I began to notice that the wisdom that I saw in his life is actually happening in my Yes. Can you imagine that we went to Ghana? There was no handbill, no banner, no flex. 4,000 people gathered. Try it. Yes. Go to Demekwe and do morning cry. You will find that nobody will come out. That What happened in Ghana is impossible. Is wisdom. You understand? It's wisdom. But I don't have time to tell you about that. But it's just following. I inherited the dealings that he had. And I began to walk in the anointing that he received. In my own opinion, I've seen every grace upon my father in a small measure. I've seen it in my life. He chose you in him. That means you have no life in this context that is apart from Jesus. Your life is hid in him. So when you consider yourself, don't consider yourself in isolation. Of him. Because it is in him that we have access to that central bank 
of the riches of God. It's only Him. So all the resources that you need is within that crucible, within that administration. The implication of this is that you are actually fully funded in Christ Jesus. For the Bible says that God is able to make all grace abound. The economy of the grace of God is only operational in Christ Jesus. Now, that's decide. Let's come decide. When you haven't understood that he chose you in him before the foundation of the world, it is needful therefore for you to understand that he chose you with hope. And the hope he had, because he's a God of faith, the hope he had was that when you come into time, you yourself will choose him. Holiness is separating yourself to God. And what that means is allowing God to be the one that operates you. You see, we are capable of so many things. Hallelujah. As a pastor, I can decide that my next mission is to commit adultery 12 times in a year and you are likely to succeed huh? but even though you can make adultery your mission he chose you with the hope that you will be separated unto him that only him will operate you and if he's the one operating you there are many things you can do that you will not do There are many things you have ability to prosecute because he's the one operating you. It will not be registered in your life because you are separated unto him. The meaning of your life is what he uses you to do, not what you can do. I always tell people that if you always ask, can it be done without asking? Should it be done? You are already falling. Because God can give you ability and never give you clearance to use it. Oh, the fact that you have anointing don't mean, doesn't mean that you will use it. I've come to, for meetings before. Heavily anointed. He said, don't lay hands today. And don't pray for the sick today. Meanwhile, the healing anointing is dripping. It's dripping. But he has not given permission for it to go into use. Are you with me? He's not healing today. You have entered into the realm. In that realm, healing is available. But he is not healing today. He can heal tomorrow, but not today. And that's why there are days we come where nobody falls down, nobody comes. Because that's not what he's doing that day. Not because, as I'm talking to you now, not because I can't access those things to begin to do here, but he's not doing it. He chose us in him with the hope that when we come into time, we'll be separated unto him. Many believers come into time and they begin to run, and run for money. Many believers come into time and they become another creature, begin to run out for another agenda. Many even run, come into time and say, I, these women are becoming fine no? and he changes mission the mission now is let's see how many we can fall you have all those abilities but if you allow him to operate you you might see some abilities that you will never use so he chose you with the hope that you will be holy separated unto him that he will be the only one to operate you he chose you with the hope that your holiness will be blameless. He chose you with the hope that you will love him. You know, he chose you. But in time, the only way you can be holy is because you choose him. He loved you. That was what even made him send his son. But he's, he, he loved you with the hope that when you come into time, you will love him. Because it's the love of God shed abroad your heart that will constrain you from doing things that will offend God. 
the primary basis of the exercise of the government of God over your life is tied to whether you love God or not. Meanwhile, you can trust God and not love God. The proof that you trust God is that you depend on Him. The proof that you love God is that you obey Him. According to Jesus, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Listen to it. The proof that you trust God is that you what? Depend on Him. And the proof that you love God is that you obey Him. I was in Port Harcourt preparing for a message and I knelt down and I was praying. God didn't give me the message. He showed me the face of a widow and said, when you get back, give this widow one million naira. I said, yes. What about the message? What about the message? I was still there. He showed me someone else's face. He said, give him this amount. I say yes. I say this meeting I'm going to preach. There are so many big preachers that are there. I can't afford not to have a message. Can we now discuss the message? He showed me another one lady. They pay her school fees. I wrote as he speaks. I write it down. The ones I could transfer and offset from that point i did but the one million i had spent beyond what i could so i see i now said i have shown you willingness already that obedience is not a problem let's can we discuss the message do you know it didn't answer me i've discovered over the years that when he refuses to answer it means it's already done I came out to walk from the place I was to where the meeting will hold. That's how the thing was. I couldn't even write. Then when I went to the pulpit, I was preaching like a wise man that knows. The moment I came back. I did what he said I should do. And when he speaks to me, he won't say, he won't say, give one million and I will give you. He, no and, just give one million. He, he, he released us into time with the hope that will be separated unto him. He released us into time with the hope that we will love him. When you love him, you don't want to hurt him. So when he says, do this, you are willing to do it. So obedience is a proof of your love. Dependence is a proof of your trust. 